Well, we'd like to uh, take this opportunity to call up someone to the podium, uh, someone who actually knows everyone's name in Shul, someone who actually doesn't need an introduction, our Marda Asha, uh, the rabbi of the Shul, Rabbi Aryeh Rodin, to give a Dvar Torah. Thank you, Rabbi Rodin. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the seminal events in the history of humanity occurred when Moshe Rabbeinu encountered the burning bush. This coming week on Shabbos, shuls around the world will be reading about the description of this very special event. Moshe Rabbeinu was shepherding the sheep of his father-in-law Yisrael, when all of a sudden he saw a bush that was engulfed in flames but it wasn't being consumed. And Moshe Rabbeinu said, Asura Nava Era, let me go out of my way and see, investigate. Madua lo yivar hasneh. Why is it that the bush is not being consumed? Yalkut Shmoni, one of the commentaries, tells us. Omar Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Moshe Rabbeinu took three steps out of his way. Hashem saw this and said, Needs to Arta, you troubled yourself. I will go ahead and reveal myself to you, Moshe. And the rest is history. Rabbi Moshe Chait, Zatzal, made the following inference from this Yalkut Shmoni. He said, What would have happened if Moshe Rabbeinu was walking? and saw this spectacle, but said, you know what, I'm too busy. I have too many things on my agenda. I don't have time to investigate. Or if Moshe Rabbeinu said, that's interesting, but I have already charted a path that I want to pursue. I don't have the time, I don't have the energy to investigate. So Rabbi Chait answers it is by inference. You know what would have happened? Moshe Rabbeinu, who accomplished unparalleled feats of achievement, who was the one that emerged as the leader par excellence of Kla Yisrael, who led the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim, initiated the ten plagues, went and split the sea, went up to heaven and learned Torah from God himself, brought down the Ten Commandments, and wrote, as dictated to him by God himself, the entire Torah. These stellar, unique accomplishments. If he would have seen the snare, burning bush, and kept on walking instead of investigating, then Moshe Rabbeinu would have walked on into oblivion, and we never would have heard of Moshe Rabbeinu, somebody else would have stepped forward. Maybe a Baruch Rabbeinu, maybe a Shimon Rabbeinu, maybe an Aryeh Rabbeinu. How many Moshe Rabbeinus are in this room? How many Mrs. Moshe Rabbeinus are here? Each and every one of us have our own burning bushes that God sends us. God loves us. He wants to show us the way to go. So we have opportunities that Hashem gives us. Tonight, we are going ahead to honor five individuals who are offered the position of being the president of a shul who is, was dedicated and is dedicated to exposing rather than imposing the beauty, the sanctity, the purity of Judaism, Yiddishkeit, to our fellow brothers and sisters. Each one, if you ask them, they didn't think they would ever become a president of a show. They didn't think they would ever become an individual to give so much time and effort. But these individuals step forward. A suran of error. Let me go on my, out of my way and investigate what this offer is all about. So we're here to honor Ted Fishman, 
Michael Allen, Don Bernstein, Jackson Solasky, and Ivan Sachs. And I applaud them for what stepping forward after saying, a Suriname, let me investigate. But of course, they couldn't have done it. And they couldn't have accomplished what they did unless they had the support of their wives. So I'd like to say to Hannah Fishman, to Debbie Allen, Charlotte Bernstein, Beverly Selasky, and Melanie Sachs, thank you very much. around at this beautiful room, the beautiful hors d'oeuvres, the tasty hors d'oeuvres, the decor, our giving tree, the beautiful menu, the food that is being prepared, and all the invitations and all that goes into making a dinner, so many moving parts. And once again, I applaud all those individuals, volunteers, nobody's on the payroll, for giving their heart, for doing it with love and making sure that we should have such a spectacular 30th anniversary dinner. Thank you very much. And finally, I'd like to applaud one more individual. A little over 30 years ago, a starry-eyed rabbi who had just completed, not that long before, Smicha's ordination comes home one day and tells his wife, how would you like to move to Dallas, Texas? You have to understand, this woman with four little children comes from Brooklyn, New York. 30 years ago, to come to Dallas, Texas, she had to move away from her parents, brothers, sisters, to come to a land, to come to a piece of, of property that we had no yeshiva at that time. We had no Erev. There was only one Orthodox shul at that time. We didn't even have a pizza place. That's kosher. <laughs> and this young woman looked at this rabbi and said, let's do it for one year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every year we would speak, this boy, young woman, the rabbi, and she would say, OK, one more year. <laughs> the years have added up. And I'm happy to say that this young woman is my wife the Rebbitson of our show, Rebbitson Henny Roden. the speech, I'd be happy to sing her praises. But my Rosh Hashiva, my Rebbe Zatzal said, when husband and wife marry, they become one. So it's a little uncomfortable to go ahead and to praise your spouse, because in a sense you're praising yourself. So all I can say is, thank you to my wife. I'm eternally grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a night of celebration. It's a night of Hakar Zatov recognition to so many people, some that we mentioned, and everybody from the beginning years and throughout the years who walked through the doors of the shul, 
who came to the classes, who were an inspiration to my wife and myself and my children, recognizing them and thanking them. It's also a year, it's also a time at this dinner to act as a springboard, to be sensitive. And thank you, Hashem, for planting within us Yiddishkeit, to recognize the different springboards, the burning bushes that are placed to each and every one of us, to recognize them and then help hopefully to respond in the affirmative thereby ensuring that our destiny will be for eternity. Have a good night.